Child, I'm still in bed, laying next to the laundry that I have not folded. Child, um, <laughs> and my phone was going off and uh, I realized that it was Kyle. Remember last night I missed his text message. So I think he texted me before I went into my Zoom and um, I ended up being in the Zoom for like over two hours and by the time I text him back he just I don't know he just didn't answer um but then I see that he texts me like at four four o'clock in the morning so I don't know maybe he went out passed out you know and woke up and realized I did text him whatever um that'll be a good conversational conversation starter I guess today uh so he's new to Atlanta and he's looking for he doesn't know like where to go for brunch, so I'm gonna check out Open Table right now and see like what's available for like one o'clock. Y'all, I'm excited. I not me get. Am I excited? <laughs> am I excited? <laughs> Y'all, I I really am excited. Um, this is my first date of the year, and I'm just excited about really being intentional about dating this year like i'm really like that's just the most exciting part for me like oh my god like i'm really going on a date and it's from a dating app this is the first time that this has happened to me i've never gone on a date off of a dating app before and um kyle is fine Ch kyle is fine uh as i stated in the previous uh vlog he is white this will be my first white date <laughs> and i'm really really nervous because i have no idea how this is gonna go i don't know i don't know if i'm like a fetish to him like is he like fetishizing me or is he really into black women um what's his story you know like child is his family racist lord um i just have so many questions but this is the first date so i plan on just keeping it cute keeping it light and you know definitely heavy on the keeping it cute so i'm i'm gonna need y'all to help me pick an outfit even though y'all are gonna see this after i don't pick the outfit but i think i'm gonna pick the outfit based on what i think you guys would like for me to wear so i literally ordered a whole bunch of stuff from sheen or she in it's this is not a sponsored video like i literally have a big old box of stuff that i ordered and i'm just gonna go through it and try on some clothes with y'all Y'all can help me, you know, do my hair and my makeup and we'll chat a little bit more. Let's go. So I, a bitch really got a date. This was not really how I planned to spend my Saturday. I'm actually in a lot of pain right now. I'm on my period and when I'm on my period, I legit feel like I'm dying. Like I legitimately feel like bom, 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 bom. Wanna tell me what you gonna do when it ain't no way to run? I don't know all the words. I didn't know but Okay, that's it. I don't know the words, child. But shout out to Bone Thugs and Harmony. I really do be feeling like. I'm gonna see y'all at the crossroads when my period is on. So, child, Kyle, Kyle is meeting me when my period is on. Is there like some type of significance to that? Like going on a first date with somebody when your period is on? Let me check in with the ancestors and ask them. Excuse me, ancestor, see why they not did. Et puis pour mieux d'être là, c'est avec un nègre. Et puis non d'être là ou sous règle. Ça, ça veut dire. They gonna get back to me. They busy right now. They said it's Corona and after life, y'all. They busy. Let's go through this Sheen box and see what the fuck going on. First, she, Sheen or she in 
dress chat. Let's see. It's not bad. Ugh, I, I hate that I have my period because I don't feel like I'm sucked in like how I should be. I'm not mad at it. Can you guys see it? Yeah, you guys actually can see it on the camera behind me. I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at this. I'm just, I'm mad at my, my bloat. And you guys are probably watching this like, girl, what's wrong with this girl? She ain't got no bloat. But I know how my stomach looks when I'm not on my period. Like, my stomach, when I'm not on my period, I... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... You know what I'm saying? Like... You know what I mean? Like, this is not giving that. So, I don't know, but... I don't know, what do you guys think about this dress? I can already tell I'm gonna really love this one. It's giving chocolate tiger. It's giving, it's giving chocolate tiger queen. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Hold on. restaurant by one o'clock i wonder if he's one of those white men that be on time either way i'm gonna respect it because you know he's not a man of color if he was a man of color i would definitely expect him to be like 15 minutes late or something like that but you know what i'm gonna respect him i'm gonna hop in the shower you know what i'm saying lather these titties up i wish i could show y'all my titties you guys know i got my titties done right i got my titties done this month will make a year my titties are gonna be a year this month i'm really 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 happy with them and i really wish there wasn't a restriction to show y'all titties like i would love to show y'all my titties because ain't nobody else seeing them 
nobody else been seeing these titties? My titties deserve to be seen. My titties deserve. They deserve. My titties deserve to be seen. But anyway, the shower about to see them. Let me hop in the shower and I'll see y'all in a bit. Woke up this morning with a smile on my face. Greets. Okay, I know I skipped the part, but greets. Bitch, I love that part. So I know, I have a song called Take Control out right now, Jesse. It's by Jesse Wu, Take Control. I haven't really been pushing it yet because I have a video that I have to shoot for it, but I wanted to put it out there just to have it out there. And I'll explain that in a later video. But y'all, y'all know the routine. Let's get into this face chat. And you know what? Let's have a chat because as I'm getting ready to have this date with my colonizer, I was, I have a lot of thoughts about this because this is my first time going on a date with a white guy. I feel like I've always had a little bit of a side eye for white mans for so many reasons. You know, those of you guys who don't know this about me, I'm Haitian, <laughs> very loud about it, very proud about it. So if you don't know, now you know I am from Haiti. Uh, well. I was actually born in Montreal, Canada. My parents met each other while they were up there. Uh, both of them were in ministry. My grandmother had a huge Kojic uh, ministry in Montreal, Canada, and my father preached there. My mom was um, a choir director, and they met each other. And you know, it was supposed they were supposed to be the the Haitian T D Jakes and Sarita Jakes child, but you know, my daddy became a crackhead. So, but that's another that's another video for another time, child. I already got enough trauma. I cannot do that. <laughs> I cannot do that before I go out with this white man. But anyway, I've always had a little bit of a side eye for white men's. And I think one thing, one one big reason for that is my culture. You know, if you know anything about Haitian history, you know what we did and how we became, you know, the first nation, the first republic to you know free ourselves from our colonizers and so i've always felt a way about white people just in general um just because number one because of my culture but number two also living in south florida i experienced a lot of racism not just from white people but also from like white hispanics so i have always just had a side eye uh for white men I always felt like, you know, sometimes like in school, I would have these conversations with like my white friends. And like, I remember one time I had a conversation when I was in college with one of my white homeboys. And he just basically told me, he was like, you know, what white people, you know, did to black people, you know, not only Haitians, but like, just black people all over the world was horrible, but it's like, why do I have to pay for that? And I remember telling him that you have to pay for it because you are currently enjoying the benefits of what your ancestors did. I am suffering from what your ancestors did to my ancestors till this day. So because of that, just that alone makes me to a certain degree have resentment and have dislike for you. And, you know, it's like, it's not a nice thing to say, but it's kind of like the truth, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I get to see every day how you just subtly get to benefit from being a white person, especially like a white male, like, you just get to get up every day and be a white male and walk around and do whatever the fuck you want to a certain degree that I will never ever get to experience ever. Even if I do get with a white man, I will never experience the luxuries that you experience because of your skin. And, you know, I think that there's a part of me that has always kind of in my heart had that little bit of, well, that lot of bit of resentment for, you know, for white people just in general. Like, 
even like, you know, when you go to work, when you start working in the corporate settings and you see just the subtle, but, but obvious racism that happens in the office. And it's like, I would, I would just always like, I cannot date. I cannot date these people. I cannot date these people because am I going to experience this when I date you? Because if I experience that when I date you, my ancestors are Haitian. I am very much my ancestors. Just, just letting you know. Coupe tête, boule kai. Yeah, that's what I'm on. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't think this is going to be healthy. How does racism look when you date? I mean, it's, it's like everyday things, right? Like, let's say you're at a restaurant and you're, you know, you as a black woman, you're at the restaurant with your white boyfriend and, and you know, the server is, that's serving you is, you know, noticeably more attentive to the other tables that are white, that have white patrons, you know, or that are white adjacent. And then, you know, they come over to you and all of a sudden, like their patience is thin. They don't, they don't have patience to explain to you, you know, what the items are on the menu or what the daily deals are, or, you know, when you're raising your hand, like to try to get their attention, they purposely, you know, don't notice you, but they notice everybody else that's, you know, flagging them down, you know, just things like that. And then, you know, you're there with a white person and they're like, oh, well, I don't, uh, well, maybe, maybe it's all in your head. Like just shit like that, I can't. Listen, Ethan, she's clearly, you know what I mean? She's clearly out of pocket. So, you know what I mean? Like things like that, I'm gonna need you to check that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna need you to check that. Is it, is it racism? Uh, yeah. Can I prove it? Uh, no, technically. You know what I mean? Like the person can come up with a whole bunch of different reasons as to why they're not serving you, you know, the way that they're serving everybody else. But see, I don't got, I don't think I got the bandwidth. I don't think I got the bandwidth to be with somebody who's going to like turn a blind eye to things like that. And, you know, I've had friends who have dated, you know, outside their race, not just white, I'm just using white as an example, but you know, there, there are other white adjacent cultures out here and, you know, they've dated outside their race and they've, they've experienced that, like they've experienced that, which I would like to call gaslighting, like someone trying to convince you that this is not really happening. And then it's all in your head. And it's like, no, ah, uh -uh, this is really happening. And Ethan, I'm gonna need you to I'm gonna need you to put your put your white supremacy to work in 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 in, in my benefit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to put your white use your white supremacy to evil even out the fucking playing field right now. White people damn sure know how to use white supremacy in a restaurant, child. You ever seen two white people like <laughs> having a white supremacy tug of war? Like, them motherfuckers know how to get their white supremacy on, child. And they'll act like they don't know what they're doing. Bitch, you know exactly what the fuck you're doing. You, is, you are your ancestor's child. You are your ancestor's wildest dreams, baby. <laughs> okay? Um, so, yeah. I feel like that's probably, like, one of the reasons why I've kind of, like, steered... Well, probably not... I don't want to say steered clear, but kind of steered clear from dating white men's. I will say though, my mom has always been like supportive of my dating. Like she has always said, Jessica, swap, swap. If you want a white man, swap bon blanc, I don't mind. I don't mind, but men on bon blanc bon blanc. Men on bon blanc bon blanc. So <laughs> in Creole, it's basically like, listen, I don't mind if you want to date a white man, but please bring me a white man. Like bring me a Caucasian. Caucasian. Bring me a Caucasian. Okay. An Asian of cock. Okay. Don't be bringing me no, no beige nigga. Bring me a cock of Asian. Reason being, and, and she was like, Mene mon bon blanc, mene mon bon blanc. On bon blanc qui gon bon nom. So bring me someone who has a name. 
in our culture, even in the Haitian culture, your name is everything. Like in Haiti, there is so much classism. Like you, I, I don't think we, we have those conversations. I think we, a lot of times we have the conversation of classism when it comes to white Haitians versus black Haitians. But there is a lot of classism within black Haitians. For instance, like your name, your name means a lot. Um, a lot of times growing up, if I did, if I did meet a Asian, if I did meet a Haitian guy, and I was like, mom, you know, I met a Haitian guy. She was like, uh, quote family soti. Kisa ki no de family. Um, so that's basically like, where in Haiti is his family from? What is his family's name? You know, the geography means a lot. There's this North versus South thing that's been there since since in Haiti's inception, since we since we became Haiti, like the North versus the South. You know, um, my mom is from the North. My dad is from the South. My mom is from Gonaive. My dad is from Jeremy. If they met in Haiti, they probably would not have gotten married. Maybe, you know, uh, I think about the fact that um, Southern guys do not have a really good reputation. Charlie, <laughs> like, my daddy ain't shit, so it applies. <laughs> but you know, Southern guys tend to not have a good reputation. And also like, I think the South period in Haiti gets a lot of flack. Um, when, if, if you know anything about what's been going on in Haiti like, the last couple years, you know, even in, before our, our president was killed last year, um, there was a lot of protests going on in the South and, you know, the Southern people were protesting saying, Hey, like you're not keeping your promises that you, you know, that you made to the South. We're still in poverty. We're still hungry. You know, now you're making it so that we cannot protest. Like protest now is becoming, a, a an act of treason. You, know, you would see so much footage of people in the south uh protesting and then people in the north just chucking it up to that's the south you know what i mean like that's the south you know here goes here goes those fucking southerners again you know you know what i mean like and it's kind of like when you look at even us like we had a civil war here in this country you know the south was the south um the north was the north and they had just different views about what you know what direction the country should go in and what democ what democracy really was and who had the right to democracy and all that and so anyway i know i'm going off on another a big ass tangent but going back to it like even as a haitian it's like what is your name what is your family name you know um there are names that are very very prominent and so I remember there will be times when I would go to my mom. I'm like, mom, I met a Haitian. Oh, you know the family. I'm just going to give just uh, any name. I'm not I'm not saying anything about anybody with the last name Baptiste. It's just Baptiste is a very common last name. So I was like, Baptiste. Oh, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Monkey Bo. And when she like, Monkey Bo, like, where from where? Uh, I don't know. Lago Nap. Ah! No, 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 like it would be a whole thing, like, and there would be so many different reasons why, like, a person with that name would not be good. It's like maybe the food was not that great, or you know, maybe um that that particular part of of Haiti, the people were known not to be too educated, or you know, there will be um all these different nuances that you like to me as a Haitian that is like first generation I'm like man I don't give a damn about none of that shit but to your parents it would be everything and so even now like coming into you know America a lot of Haitian parents they still hold on to that like hey 
make sure if you're gonna bring me somebody here if you're gonna bring somebody here make sure that it's a person with a good name a good family name what what does their family do what does that person do you know and preferably they would want you to especially if you're a girl they would want you to be with a man who comes from a good background who um especially like successfully find um uh, uh, financial freedom like they would want that for you because you are the prize like you as a woman you are the prize and um so yeah like my mom was all has always been supportive she's she her whole big thing is even till this day she'll always tell me she's like Jess like you have always been like so independent you've always worked very hard I just really want you to have a a man that's going to be able to take care of you although I'm very driven and you know I'm never gonna be the type of person who is gonna just sit down and not do anything but I want the luxury of being with a man who feels the need Child, my camera cut off but <laughs> My camera cut off right when I was just starting to uh, contour my nose, which I'm doing a beautiful job at. Um, but yeah, my mama always just her thing is just it's important to have someone that can take care of you as a man. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, so back to just going on this date, like I don't have like extreme high hopes. You know, I do look forward to this because like it is my first experience dating a white guy. I have dated um, Hispanics, but when I dated, for instance, like my longest relationship was with a Dominican. He's black. You know, I know a lot of Dominicans. Like, I know black, I know black, I know black. Carlos was black as hell. Carlos was from Alapata. Okay, you couldn't tell him he was not a nigga. Okay, <laughs> like um, he was from the hood. And what was funny was his dad was darker than me. Like, dark. I'm dark. Look at me. I am a dark-skinned woman. His dad was darker than me. And still with that, I know black. I know black. It's like, my nigga, you... <laughs> Remember when, like, we were kids and, like, in school they had those, like, you black at the midnight jokes? Baby, he was 12 o'clock black, okay? He was 12 o'clock on the dot. I'm in my drop top. Who's in the streets? Black. Okay. I have dated. I did date a, a white Hispanic. He was Puerto Rican. Um, and child, he was an experienced child. Oh Lord, Jason was <laughs> an experienced child. Remind me to tell y'all about Jason in another vlog. But anyway, I'm gonna hurry up and put on my lashes, do my eyeshadow, and hurry up and speed out of here because it's already 12 o'clock and I have to be there by 1 p.m. Okay, y'all. This is the makeup, child. Oh my gosh, this eye is just... Now that I know that this eye is bigger than this one, I'm just... Oh God. Is he gonna notice that? Is he gonna be like, oh no, she got one eye bigger than the other. I can't do this. This bitch is terrestrial. <laughs> this is a terrestrial bitch. <laughs> I cannot date no terrestrial bitch. <laughs> but all right, y'all. So we're gonna go ahead and put our clothes on and get cute. Child, I'm not gonna be on time. It's 12.31. Child, we is doing, this is what you call drive-by curls, okay? Drive-by curls by Jesse Child. I don't know what the fuck going on in the back. <laughs> I don't know if, if what's going on in the back, if you can see it from the front. <laughs> but baby, this is drive-by curls. Drive-by curls by Jesse. One day I will actually do a good, um, vlog and show y'all how I really curl my hair because I'm good at curling my hair but that day ain't today okay so drive by curls drive by curls honey drive by curls Alexa what time is it the time is 12 p.m. child y'all let me know what y'all think child this is the this is the this is the look hold up hold up I'm gonna put on my Louis boots. I'm late to my date. He gon' hate. Not me being a rapper. Hold on, let me find out I'm one of Nicky's sons. Hold on. You know, when, you, when you reach 30, child, these, these knees, <laughs> baby, this is, this is not my college knees, okay? Well, what y'all think? What y'all think? 
y'all think? What y'all think? No, I don't feel like this looks good. That's better. It's not hanging. Alright, I just need some earrings. Okay, so I have the earrings on. Okay. My hair's a little messy, but you know, white guys like that. I'm gonna wear this house too. I think that that's really gonna make a statement. But what I have on, what y'all think? Like, that's right. <laughs> y'all let me head on to this date <laughs> i'll see you guys in a little bit y'all i have good news so kyle just hit me up and he said i'm gonna be there closer to 11 15 baby he got a little bit of black in him he got a little bit of black in him look at him look at him look at him operating on color people time yes we love to see it we love to see it because i wasn't gonna be on time <laughs> let me put um my money uh, and my cards in here just in case he ain't on white people time when it comes to pamper shit. Definitely gonna need lip gloss, powder, and some liner. So. Okay, y'all. I'm back from my date. Uh, it is 4 23. We were together from 1.30. We just left the restaurant probably like 10, 15 minutes ago. So we spent almost three hours together. <laughs> I... <laughs> you know what? Let me take a seat. Let me get a drink of water, a glass of water. I'm also going to um, take some um, pain medication because I'm actually on the second day of my period. And I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm in so much pain right now. But... I just sucked it up, went on this date, and you know, just sucked it up. But I'm literally like, I feel like I'm gonna pass out soon. So I wanna just hurry up and give you guys the rundown on the date before I pass out. So let me grab some water, let me grab some pain medication, and then let's chit chat. Forgive me if my hair looks a little messy and everything. Um, I didn't brush it or anything while I was on a date. I didn't really touch up my makeup or anything either at all, actually. This is just exactly how I left. Um, this is me. So, anywho, so we went to the Gypsy Kitchen. Kyle picked that place and it was really, really good. Like, it's just like Spanish tapa type food. Um, it's actually right next to Le, to Le Colonial, which is one of my favorite spots to go here in Atlanta. Um, so I was surprised I didn't really know about uh, the Gypsy Kitchen. Hold on, y'all. Let me adjust my camera real quick. Okay. So I was surprised I didn't really know about the Gypsy Kitchen like that. Um, but anyway, we didn't really eat. Uh, all I got was hummus. He didn't eat. He just drank a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't really think that's a white man thing because I feel like even like when I watch like white people just in general when I'm out and about, like white dudes will sit down at a table and drink like for hours and hours and hours and not even eat. He didn't even eat. I had... Um, hummus and pita bread and i had like two drinks but anyway y'all like we sat there for like two and a half hours almost three hours just talking and i was really nervous when i first got there i was like oh shit because i was late i was 30 minutes late <laughs> we were in traffic for a little bit when i was in the uber and um by the time i got to the restaurant i was like shit like i was 30 minutes late but i was texting him along the way he's like he's like no rush no rush you're fine and when I got there, like, there he was. He looked exactly how he looked in his picture on the dating app. And um, I think the first couple minutes were a little awkward. It was like, okay, like, hi, nice to meet you. And hey, you know. And then I think, like, once we both started drinking, we both just got really comfortable with each other. And the conversation just got really, really Cool. He's here working on a project for the next two years in Atlanta and um, you know he asked me what I did and I said well <laughs> I was like well right now I'm part of the cast on Wild Now and he was like are you like pregnant with Nick Cannon's baby <sighs> you 
You see, Nicolas, this is why you have to put your canon away. Parce que moi même c'est dans date, m'bale, I'm on a date. I'm on a date. And I can't even tell a motherfucker I'm on what and not without them asking me, oh, you fucking Nick Cannon too. Like, do I got to worry about Nick and his cannon? Like, it's just, like, ridiculous. I was like, nah, baby, I ain't pregnant with Nick Cannon, baby child. Anyway, Nick Cannon don't do dark-skinned women, so, <laughs> I'm safe. Hallelujah. Sorry, Nick. Um, not sorry. I love you, Nick. Um, but, um, I had to explain, no, I'm not pregnant. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not a wild-out girl. He's like, so you're part of the cast cast? And he's like, what's your name on there? And I was like, Jessica, because he knows me by Jessica. And he was like trying to look me up and Jess Hilarious kept coming up and that shit was funny. He, he was like, he was like, but you're not Jess Hilarious. Like he's looking at Jess and then he's looking at me. And I'm like, um, I said, well, he's like, are you funny on there? And I'm like, well, I did have a joke go viral last year. And he was like, what is a joke? So I told him how to search it. I said, just, just search Wildin' Out Jesse Whitney Houston. And he pulled it up. So he pulls up the Whitney joke and he was cracking up. He was like, it was fucking funny. But before he saw it, the first thing that popped up was the TMZ article. He was like, it's on TMZ? Oh, oh shit, what the fuck did you say about Whitney? And then when the joke came up, he was like, oh, that shit's fucking funny. He's like, that is hilarious. He's like, I mean, I don't know why people were angry. Like she is passed away. I was like, yeah, child, I don't want to go through that. We just... And he was like, okay, well, so anyway, I think I, once he saw that I was funny or, you know, just easy to, just easy to talk to and easy to joke around with, he got even more comfortable. Like we were at that table just, <laughs> I, we just went in and it was just really, really cool. Um, he, I did not think that like I would be like sitting there like looking at him the way I look at black guys, which is a lot of times like when I, when I know that like I'm attracted to somebody, like sometimes like it, it's the first date and you know, like I'm looking at them like, And I was damn sure looking at him like, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, there were a couple moments where he told me like how beautiful I was. I was like, <laughs> I'm beautiful. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> time um and we learned a lot about each other in that short amount of time i learned that he has three siblings just like me his parents are no longer together just like me i didn't know that white people had broken homes white people got broken homes too i didn't know that and um he's just as cool um he's only been here five days so i was like well damn so i'm your first atlanta date he was like yeah he was like hopefully you're my last and i was like <laughs> look at you with that game <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> um, so anyway, so after the date, he offered to take me home. Now, I ain't going to hold you. I thought, okay, should this man take me home? Like, is he going to try to kidnap me? I don't know. And I said, you're not going to try to kidnap me, are you? <laughs> um... So child, we went looking for his car and his car was in the garage, like part of the garage and he couldn't find the elevator. So there was like a staircase door and child, it was like four staircases. And I was like, yeah, not my heart just sank to my stomach. I was like, oh hell no, this nigga trying to kill me. I can't. I was like, ah, 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 let's find the elevator. Let's find the elevator. You know what I'm saying? I want to stay where cameras are at. You know what I'm saying? And just if, if anything go down, we get in that car, bitch, I will stop, drop, and motherfucking roll on P Street. You hear me? Um, I text my friend Sasha. I was like, girl, listen, I'm with this white man. He got 15 minutes to take me home. If you don't hear from me in 15 minutes, call me, call the police, call my mama, call, call, call Haiti, call everybody. This nigga done kidnapped me. Call everybody. Um... But you know, thank God he ain't kidnapped me or nothing. Um, so on the ride home, 
It was just funny because like so he was listening to music, he was playing music, whatever, and I think he played a he played a country song that some country artist did with Lil Dirt. And he's like, Do you listen to country? I was like, Oh, Shania Twain's my bitch. This man put on Shania Twain, I feel like a woman. Tell me why we were in the car singing the song at the top of our lungs together. Is this what it's like to be with white niggas? Shania Twain? Karaoke in the car? Oh, I feel like a woman. Bum, 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 bum. Let's go, girls. He said the let's go, girls part. He was like, let's go, girls. We're going on tonight. We're feeling all right. Gonna let it all hang out. Like, he was singing the motherfucking song. The best thing about being a woman is the prerogative to have a little fun, man. Oh, oh, oh. Like, he was singing the fucking song. And I'm singing it too. And I'm like, this is what the white niggas is doing. Anyways, y'all. So obviously, I made it home. I didn't get kidnapped. Yay! I didn't get kidnapped. <laughs> yes, God. I made it home, and um, I look forward to seeing him again. We, I did. He, he asked me like what I was doing tonight. I was like, oh, you know, I'm going out with my friends, which I am. And he's like, you know, well, you know, hit me up during the week, and you know, I, I'd love to see you again. I was like, I'd love to see you again too. But honey, it, it just was a little too steamy for me. I don't know, like, it was just, it was steamy. I did kiss him when I left, because I was like, I just wanna, I ain't put no tongue in there or nothing. I just, you know what I'm saying, just look. You know what I'm saying, that's all I did, look. That's it, that's all I gave him, just a look. Um, or whatever, and Yo girl went on her first dating app date. Like, I cannot believe I did this. Like, it might not be a big deal to y'all, but to me, it is a big deal because I have never done this before. And I just, I feel like a woman. Let's go, bitch! <laughs> so, um, I'm definitely gonna keep, you know, seeing what else is out there um and of course i'm gonna keep in contact with kyle too and you know i'm gonna keep dating like i'm going to keep dating so do you guys think i should see him again this week i don't think i should i think i'm gonna just probably go on another date you know like i just i want to give myself that chance to really date just because i i found someone that i did click with i don't want to i don't want to double down on that yet i want to go on another date and another date and another date until i feel like nah like this is i want to i want to stay over here so let me know what you guys thought about today's vlog this is the second vlog i can't believe i'm doing this i feel like i'm kind of breaking another wall with y'all and just really letting y'all into you know this part of my life um I have a lot of like work stuff coming up and I'm going to try to vlog all that too. But I really think I like this vlog and shit. Like I, like I like this. Do y'all like this? I like this. I like this. You know, so I'm going to try to keep doing it. And uh, thank you so much to all of you guys who liked the first one. I saw all your comments. I read every one. Um, there was a lot of good advice in there. And of course, I'm going to, you know, to soak up what I can. And, you know, I, I like this. I like this. I like this. So, anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching it. It's your sister. And I'll see you guys in the next vlog.